Welcome once again to the Vault Reviews, where we do album reviews for you guys instead of typing them out. So today we've got a, an example, a prime example, of a pretty awesome band that usually can fall through the cracks. We see this all the time, and this is definitely was a, I'll call it a little bit of an experiment, really, with the styles, and I, it just was something that didn't come out at the right time, and that would be my Friend Lonely by Cyclone Temple, which Cyclone Temple, most people have no idea who they were, and I, did, I didn't have any idea who they were until I come across them one day. So, um, Brent, what was your initial thoughts of this band before we get really in-depth? Uh, the uh, album cover just bugged the crap out of me, but you could tell it was 90s stuff. Right. I mean, as weird as that sounds to pick out, that was just weird. I mean, it was... I don't even know how to describe it. It's just odd. I mean, it's like a doll's head or something. But I, I just thought it was strange. I think you just hit the nail on the head that could possibly cover this whole review, and that's it's 90s. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. It's just the first time I heard this, the production quality and uh, <laughs> the vocals, which we'll get into here in a little bit, I was like, man, th this is total 90s, and I totally understand why it didn't go anywhere. So uh, this was released in 1994, and it's an interesting mix of thrash, metal, and kind of a groove metal, and there's even some funk elements. The, you know, it's, it's pretty heavy at times, and there's uh, definitely some harmonic parts at times and some melody in the music. It, it's still heavy, though. Uh, musically, what did you think of this album? Uh, musically, it wasn't bad. I mean, there was nothing like earth-shattering or anything, but overall, I mean, it was some pretty decent, solid thrash. Uh, I, I, I don't want to get too far into it, but yeah, I mean, honestly, I would say overall, it, it's actually fairly solid. The production, I think, kind of lets it down. If they were kind of to re-record it, I think today, with a little better budget, it would be a better album. Oh yeah, I totally agree with that. But, I mean, you know, again, it's the 90s. Take it as a product of its time. And it's fairly solid thrash. But I'm like you. I mean, it came out, like, towards the end of, like, the reign of thrash, you know, whenever it was kind of losing its pizzazz. You know, and when I when I first heard this, I thought of, like, uh, early the early 90s Cowboys from Hell era Pantera. Did that remind you of that at all? I Honestly, now that you say that, yeah. But at the time, it didn't dawn on me. So we're talking about the 90s. Let's jump into the vocals. And that's where I think this band kind of excelled with the time period. Um, it had this total grunge, like, Eddie Vedder, Pearl Jam feel to it. And there's, uh, like, I don't I don't know if you would have probably taken this singer and put him in a different band in the same time period. They probably would have sold a million albums. Do you think so? Uh, yeah. It, the first thing that caught me with the album is, I mean, other, I actually dig the first song, but was the voice sounded really familiar, and it took me the entire album to actually kind of pinpoint it. You hit it on the head with, like, Eddie Vedder, and I get, like, a little bit of, like, early, like, Stone Temple Pilots. Yeah, that's perfect, actually. And, I mean, his voice, it bugged the crap out of me until I actually, like, pulled up. I think it was, like, one of the songs off Purple from Stone Temple Pilots, and I'm like, that's it. Yeah. And, and, I mean, it's almost exactly like that. And there again, I mean, you know, you're 90s, so, you know, it fits. But, yeah, I'm like you. You know, if you put him in a type of band like one or like a Pearl Jam or something, I think he could have done a whole lot better. And uh, another thing I'll t comment on the vocals is I really didn't like him at first. Uh, but the more I listened to the album, the more I was like, well, I kind of like this because it sounds totally different than anything that's ever been done. I mean, uh, when we say thrashy, this music had that thrashy element. We're not talking that it was a Slayer copy or an Anthrax copy. It just had that feel, kind of like I said earlier, the Cowboys from Hell era Pantera, that it even had that groove in it. And then there was little elements of funk music, but you had all that mixed with this, like, uh, Eddie Vedder, uh, Stone Temple Pilots kind of 90s grunge thing. I don't know. It was just... I, I started to really enjoy this album just because it was an interesting mix I'd never heard before. Uh, yeah, I agree. It was, uh, you know, a lot of it, like the uh, Hate Makes Hate, and uh, that song, whenever I first heard it, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is just kind of, you know, your common generic, uh, you know, kind of mid-90s thrash when it was, you know, kind of on its downswing. But the rest of the album, I mean, you get into it, there's even a reggae part. Yeah, and then they rap at some point on there. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, my favorite part, and this is going to sound really stupid, and 
only people who played in like high school marching band will appreciate this. But my favorite part of the entire album was a song I didn't really care for, but it was Drug of the Masses whenever you have out of the middle of nowhere you have a triangle being hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, honestly, that kind of sums up the album. Is you have reggae, you have like a triangle, and then you have some thrash elements. And that actually kind of impressed me. I was shocked how much I actually liked it, especially considering the album cover was hideous. Yeah, uh, there's just more elements to this band as far as like just sounding completely original, and then but still keeping the vocals with the time period. So you know they had that kind of uh, I guess a foot to stand on, so to speak, because they could gain fans by having the current style, but changing up music. I mean, look in the look in the middle '90s with like Tool. You know their music yeah. didn't sound anything like what was else was coming out. But <laughs> I could see how certain people maybe thought that Maynard's vocals kind of sounded grunge, you know? Right. All right, so uh, let's just get into the negative aspects of it. What did you not like besides the album cover? Obviously, we've established that. Um, a couple of the songs just kind of caught me as generic. One of them I thought was kind of interesting was the song Comfortably Superficial caught me as very generic, and considering the title, I thought that was kind of humorous. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there was a little bit of that. I think sometimes they tried to throw a little too much mix in, and I don't think they quite succeeded on it. And while there is a good mix, and it's all overall, it's fairly solid. It kind of there's nothing earth shattering to me. I mean, it was good it, at the time. Had I heard this in the '90s, and I might feel a little bit different about it. Uh, but now, you know, with the voice and everything being familiar, it was good, but it, nothing was really earth shattering. And I noticed, or it seemed to me, on uh, the second song, and this is kind of nitpicking, which, you know, take that for a good against the album, really. But the song Down the Drain, I believe it's called, the mm-hmm. timing at the beginning seems off. Like It's like the instruments aren't on the same like time signature, which is weird, but that's also kind of, you know, something you get occasionally with thrash music, so... You know, I think I appreciate this album more now than I would have if I was in the 90s. Because when I was, you know, in the 90s, I wanted that new metal. I wanted any kind of heavy screaming stuff. I wouldn't have appreciated this. Even the music, I don't think I would appreciate it because I wasn't even into thrash at that time. But, you know, I think it does kind of fall short in that when I'm listening to it, the formula of the songs, for the most part, Starts sounding kind of the same. You, you kind of kind of get the same. You're like, okay, I know what's coming. I know it's coming with the chorus. This verse is going to be like this. They're going to do this part of the guitar at this point, and it's not bad. It's just that's that was really my my drawback. And the vocals took. I, you know, at first when I first started listening to this album several years ago, I, I like I said, it took me a little bit to get into the vocals. But I think at this point I'm past that. I can't really knock it because I think it's a little bit more original. Looking back, even even to this day, it sounds original. A lot of the newer stuff that's out, but yeah, really for me, just you know, the kind of nothing really jumped out and grabbed me, other than just the fact that they tried so many different things to mix together. And for that, I gotta commend them big time. So, uh, what were some of your favorite songs on here? Um, I actually really enjoyed "Hate Makes Hate," which mm-hmm. is the first song, and I actually like the uh, I guess the title track, "The My Friend Lonely" with the reggae. Yeah. And I, I really enjoyed that. That was one of the mix parts where they actually did it, I think, really, really well. Uh, those two were really the ones that really stuck out to me, like I said, other than the little triangle part, which is all of like a half a second. <laughs> so It's funny. My favorite songs are two that you didn't like, and I think it's probably for different reasons. Um, the Comfortably Superficial, I do agree that it was kind of generic, but there's there's some parts in the middle there with the guitars that I liked. Um, and it wasn't the whole song. It was just... Like, I would go back and listen to that song just for specific parts because I thought they were that good. But overall, the song was, you know, it was okay. And then uh, Down the Drain, I thought that was a pretty solid song. But uh, let's just jump right into the review, one star being the worst, five star being the best. What would you give this album? I'm going to give it a good solid three because, like I said, it, it's it's actually fairly solid all told. Like you said, some of the songs start kind of sounding the same a little bit. That they do, you know, they, they try very hard to throw in a lot of different things and kind of change it up a little bit. I'm going to give them some credit on that. Overall, very solid album. I'm going to give it a good solid three. Yep, totally agree. Um, I'm giving it a three and three quarters, and the reason I'm giving it a little bit of a bump is just because they're trying something different for the time that even to this day sounds fresh. Um, yeah. You know, if, a, if an album came out 
2015 sounding with those vocals, that would be original. Nobody's really doing funk thrash stuff. I mean, it, it is being done, but but you know what I mean. Nobody's really trying, and everybody wants to do whatever's hip, whether it's deathcore, stoner rock, whatever's popular. That's what everybody's wanting to do. These guys didn't do that. They just threw caution to the wind. They're like, hey, we're going to put out what we want to put out and mix all these different genres. That being said, that might be one reason why this album kind of slipped through the cracks. I didn't even find out about this album until about five years ago, and I just happened to come across this, and I checked it out and thought it was awesome. Got it, able to pick it up for pretty cheap. But that will give a review for My Friend Lonely by Cyclone Temple, a three and a half. I think that's pretty good. I agree. It's absolutely – it's something to check out. I mean, it really is. If you're a fan of, like, the kind of 90s thrash – it's good. The vocals, I didn't have the problem you did with the vocals. I actually kind of enjoyed it other, and it was just distracting. I was trying to remember who, or think of who he sounded like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, other than that, I didn't, you know, they didn't turn me off on the album at all. So. Yeah, like I said, I grew to like him and really appreciate him. I think it was just the very first uh, couple listens, I was like, ugh, generic 90s. And <laughs> I almost couldn't get to the music through the vocals. But then I really started liking it, and I thought it mixed really well with the music. It was pretty yeah. original, so. Uh, any, any last words on this album? Just check it out. It's some, I think it's honestly worth checking out. Yeah, I do too, just for the originality and just as another example of how bands slip through the cracks. And we just encourage you guys to continue to seek out music. You know, Don't sit on your butt and just get what people want to serve you and say, hey, this is good, or you know, this online publication tells you to check this out. And because it's a 10-star rating. You know, we didn't give this album a 5-star rating, but we think it's solid and definitely worth checking out, and maybe it'll be 5 stars to you, but you're not going to know unless you give it a listen. So with that, we'll close the show, and thanks for checking us out. Until the next review, see ya. Peace.